Another year gone. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, what's it all about, Dougal? Well, it doesn't really have a story, Ted. You know, it's just about football and stuff. <laughs> a few years ago, I was working as a bartender in a downtown Philadelphia restaurant when a couple on vacation from Ireland stopped in. After conversing for a few minutes, I realized I had very little to relate to them, but then an idea struck me. Admittedly, I said, I know very little about Irish culture, but all that I do know I learned from Father Ted. And what do you say to a cup? Take off, cup! <laughs> Cup of tea. Fake off! Their eyes lit up, and it was clear merely mentioning Father Ted brought out a joy in them that few other topics could. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I was just as excited to talk to someone about this show, as in the US, Father Ted is tragically overlooked, remembered only by those who caught it years ago on PBS or BBC America. Done with this sort of thing! Careful now. Down with this sort of thing. I discovered this show around a decade ago after falling in love with another sitcom called Toast of London, which shares the same creator. Yeah, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. At the time, I remember hearing Father Ted described as basically the Seinfeld of Ireland, which is even more telling of its legacy, as Father Ted ran for just 25 episodes compared to the 180 of Seinfeld. That would be an ecumenical matter! <laughs> yes, I... I suppose it would. But even so, the show has become a cultural touchstone in the UK, even resulting in annual conventions. A 2019 poll by Radio Times named it the second greatest sitcom behind Faulty Towers. Like what you said to Bishop Lindsay when he asked me where I was when Kennedy was shot. Oh yeah. I mean, you overreacted slightly there. He wasn't accusing me of anything. <laughs> Despite growing up halfway around the world from where it was set, I always related to the comedy in Father Ted. This was probably aided by the fact that I grew up attending Catholic school, as if you hadn't guessed based on its title, Father Ted is distinctively Catholic in its humor. Our nun's great though, Ted. It, it's good because you don't feel as nervous with them as you do with real women, do you? <laughs> but the refreshing part is the show didn't glorify Catholicism, yet it didn't villainize it either. Rather, it humanized it and its practitioners, perfectly lampooning the experience of growing up around the religion and its more ridiculous aspects. That's nearly as mad as that thing you told me about the loaves and the fishes. No, dude. <laughs> That's not mad. A couple of years ago, I made a video introducing American audiences to Italian comedy duo Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill, and I was thrilled when so many of you decided to check them out based on my recommendation. So I'd like to have the great pleasure of introducing you to Father Ted. Do you know what I love about being famous? People listen to you. They listen to what you have to say. And I have a lot to say. What about when you're doing your sermons, Ted? People listen to you then, don't they? Ah, no, Dougal. I mean people I respect. <laughs> I'll be exploring its history and showing you why this show deserves a second look here in the States. And if you are familiar with the show, I encourage you to watch as well, as it might help you fall in love with Father Ted all over again. Right, so let's go then. <laughs> Hello? Done with this sort of thing. Careful now. Are you tired of missing out on great comedy from across the pond? Well, fret no more, as NordVPN is here to help. I love watching British comedies, like The Thin Blue Line, for instance, which I sadly can't stream in the US, and that's why I use Nord. Nord allows me the ability to reroute my IP address to access streaming content from overseas that otherwise wouldn't be available to me. With Nord, I'm able to access streaming platforms in 60 countries using Nord's 5,879 worldwide servers. And with Nord available on every major platform, I'm able to use it on up to six devices, which is perfect for me, especially when I'm not working from home. Best of all, Nord offers top tier encryption tools that block intrusive ads and web trackers, so I always feel safe whenever I'm working at a nearby coffee shop or library. Nord offers different packages and price points as well as being risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get their exclusive Black Friday deal when you sign up for a two-year plan plus four extra months at nordvpn.com slash hats off ENT. Again, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Father Ted was the brainchild of Irish comedy writers Graham Linehan and Arthur Matthews, who met working for a music magazine in the early 90s. The two originally created the character of Father Ted for a planned mockumentary series called Irish Lives, where each episode would have profiled a different character within a small community. Ted was described in that first script as, quote, a perpetually jolly and rather sad man, 
who through some terrible accident of fate, found himself in the priesthood. The favorite son would become a doctor, and then the idiot brother would be sent off to the priesthood. <laughs> Your brother's a doctor, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> when the two showed the script to their producer, Jeffrey Perkins, he suggested they drop the mockumentary format and rework it as a standard sitcom centered around the Ted character. Oh, God almighty. Oh, Christ. Sorry about that. <laughs> In the reworked script, the story was now set on Craggy Island, a fictional island off the west coast of Ireland. Ted was written to have been banished there due to a misappropriation of funds earlier in his career, an event that is continually referenced throughout the series. First of all, that money was just resting in my account before I moved it on. It was resting for a long time, Ted. Yes, yeah, but a good long rest. Look, Dougal, we're not talking about me. He was joined there by two priests also banished, Father Dougal Maguire, played by Irish comedian Ardell O'Hanlon. I looked in the mirror this morning, and I saw a middle-aged, gray-haired man staring back at me. Who was that, Ted? sent to Craggy Island for something referred to only as the Black Rock Incident. After the Black Rock Incident. Yes, that was it. The amount of people's lives irreparably damaged. Uh, there were only nuns. <laughs> Writers based the character of Dougal partly on Stan Laurel. There's some shaving cream just there. No, there's not that. No, you're grand. <laughs> Though O'Hanlon chose to play the part like an energetic dog at times. Uh, well, just a moment. These elements combined make Dougal a perfect counterpart to the straight-laced Ted. I wouldn't know Ted, you big bollocks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Rounding out this holy trinity is Father Jack Hackett. God, how would you describe him? Mid-50s to mid-80s. Tremendous smell of vegetables often for some reason. A disgraced, foul-mouthed priest with a fondness for drinking, who was banished there for obvious reasons. It's not drink, Father, it's just fizzy water. Jacob's Creek Chardonnay, 1991! <laughs> Ted and Dougal take care of Jack like he's their grumpy pet cat. Father Jack may be bad, but he's not a dog. <laughs> there he is now. He probably wants to go out. <laughs> Jack was played by Frank Kelly, who wore false teeth and a milky contact lens to portray him. He read right down to the very last line, and even I can't say that one. The three of them have a great dynamic. Three men who couldn't be more unlike one another, but they're forced to live together because they all just happen to be priests. Ike! <laughs> These really do work, don't they, Dougal? Oh, you're right there, Ted. Would you like one for later? I could put it in a bag. Ah, no, no, don't bother. No, no. Here's a little bag you can bring one home in. No, no, no. And here's a bigger bag you can put the little bag into. I think a great balance to them is their housekeeper, Mrs. Doyle, played by Pauline McGlynn. I thought you were Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Who feels no problem in life can't be solved with a cup of tea. No, thanks anyway, Just Mrs. Doyle. Cup. I'm fine. I'm no, really. I'll tell you what, Father. I'll pour Seriously. a cup for you anyway. Seriously. Ah! Pauline was only in her 30s at the time of filming, but was made to look much older thanks to great makeup design. This allows Pauline to have a lot of fun in the physicality of the character. <laughs> but truly, the comedy in Father Ted rested on its lead actor. That's the great thing about Catholicism. It's so vague and nobody really knows what it's all about. <laughs> While creator Arthur Matthews was the original choice to play Ted, comic Dermot Morgan was chosen based on the series of sketches he did as a character named Father Trendy. In short, what we need is less Bob and more hope. When the boys were casting Ted, they remembered, yeah, he used to do something with the priest team, and we can remember him in the dog color. So, you know, the, 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 that character served me very well in the sense that it, um, when they came to cast their own guy, Arthur and Graham, uh, they thought of me for, for Father Ted, who was uh, And a jolly good choice as well, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Dermot, through his impeccable timing and comic reactions, made Ted one of the great straight man characters in comedy history. This must be the longest game of Cluedo I've ever played. How long are we at it now? Five hours? <laughs> Ted, should there not be some cards in here or something? A perfect audience surrogate in a bizarre sea of eclectic characters. I'm fine for cake, Mrs. Doyle. Are you sure, Father? <laughs> There's cocaine in it. There's what? When writing the episodes, Matthews and Linehan often found themselves saying, Poor Ted. 
to reflect the constant unfair situations the character was thrown into. Maybe we're seeing another side of Father Jack, a more caring, considerate. <laughs> The comedy in Father Ted is far more surreal than in a typical sitcom. Next thing you'll be telling me you didn't lock the front door. <laughs> ah, Ted, come on. The situations are unrealistic, but we completely buy into them as an audience thanks to their performances. For example, in this season one episode, Ted lies to a group of visiting nuns to get out of saying mass for them in favor of other plans he made. Is it serious? <laughs> oh, yes. In this case, the person dying is quite seriously ill. It's, it's someone we know very well. But as the lie gets deeper, his bluff is called in spectacular ways. Father Crayley was just telling us about your friend dying. Who is that, Ted? Oh, uh, old Jim. He's just outside. Hold on there and I'll get him. What? Ted said you were dying. Dying? Oh, no. Just I was talking to Dr. Sinnott and he said... <laughs> There he is now! <laughs> Dr. A lot of comedy in Father Ted is like this. There's a level of disbelief at play, but it totally works in the execution. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. <laughs> the genius of the Ted character is how he's portrayed as an ordinary working man. He doesn't have some glorified view of the priesthood, instead treating it like it's just a run-of-the-mill job. Sorry, Ted. I was concentrating too hard on looking holy. <laughs> oh, and to be honest, I couldn't give a toss. He doesn't seem particularly enthused to be a priest either, though he's vowed to make the best of it. There's only one Mother Teresa, and that's you, Ted. <laughs> and likewise, I don't think Dougal understands why he's a priest either. Dougal... <sighs> How did you get into the church? Was it like, collect 12 crisp packets and become a priest? As he doesn't seem to even understand the ins and outs of the religion half the time. Dude, well, you are so too meant to take it seriously. Are you? Yes! Oh, heaven and hell and everlasting life. Yes, of course! <laughs> This dynamic makes Ted and Dougal one of the great double acts, like Laurel and Hardy or Abbott and Costello. I'm just trying to say, Dougal, I like you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Who are you saying that to? You! I just said it there! <laughs> These two actors find a terrific chemistry that really carries the comedy in Father Ted. No, no, Dougal, it's not morning. I just switched on the light again to wind the clock. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, Ted. And then there's Father Jack, a real-life Tasmanian devil whose antics get everyone in constant trouble. Ah, uh, now, really, Father, honestly, this is a no-smoking flight. The three priests are overseen by Bishop Brennan, played by Jim Norton. I have to be off to Rome tomorrow for an audience with the Pope. I love those programs. Have you seen the one with Elton John? <laughs> one of my favorite episodes revolves around him ordering Ted, Dougal, and Jack to protest a blasphemous new film. Make some kind of a protest at the cinema. Even you should be able to manage that. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> but the three of them inadvertently make the film a hit due to all the publicity they bring to it. There's you, there's Forrest Gump, and there's Father Jack actually watching the film. For the scenes that take place around Craggy Island, location manager Joe Martis chose County Clare, a town in Southern Ireland, due to how its coastal location gave off the impression of being on an actual island. The interiors for all the sets were filmed at a London studio in front of a live studio audience, with the scenes married flawlessly together in editing. The first series consisted of just six episodes, as both the creators and the network weren't putting much weight into its success. But upon airing in April 1995, the show found an audience throughout the UK, and it quickly became one of the most popular shows on television, changing the careers of everyone involved overnight. Fair enough. <laughs> As a result of its success, 10 episodes were commissioned for Season 2, along with a larger production budget. This allowed the creative team to bring the characters to new places, like in the first episode of the season where Ted, Dougal, and Jack vacation at a caravan park. The holiday starts here, Dougal. <laughs> I'm amazed at how much comedy they're able to mine out of this small caravan set, but they continually find new ways to be funny in such a limited space. Ready or not? <laughs> 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 
The season would later feature one of the most acclaimed episodes of the series, A Song for Europe, where Ted and Dougal worked to enter a song in that year's Eurovision contest. First one. No, not the f***ing first one! The f***ing first one's already f***ing down! <laughs> Just play the f***ing notes you're f***ing playing earlier! I've been playing the f***ing first one! This season also allowed the writers to flesh out the supporting characters as well. Like John and Mary, for instance, a couple who run Craggy Island's lone convenience store and are always at each other's throats, when Ted or Dougal interrupts. You watch that mouth of yours! I'll watch nothing! I'll stick this up your ass! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Hello, you two. Or Tom, Craggy Island's village idiot, marked by his I Shot JR t shirt. I is there a man looking at you with a t shirt saying, I Shot JR? <laughs> Or Father Larry Duff, who Ted always inconveniences upon calling. Must have it switched off. There was also Ted's nemesis, Father Dick Byrne, basically the bizarro version of Ted on nearby Rugged Island. Even if you don't win the contest, I'm sure your song's a very good one. Really? No! <laughs> oh, I really hate Father Dick Byrne! Some of the best episodes, though, were when all these priest characters come together. What happened to you? We were looking for the toilets that we wanted in here by mistake. Get out! It's huge! It's Ireland's biggest lingerie section, I understand. Right, this is the situation. We have eight priests hanging around the lingerie section. If there's one or two of us, <laughs> that'll be embarrassing. But eight? We're talking national scandal. The great thing about watching Father Ted is how little the episodes connect to one another. You could watch an episode from season one, followed by one from season three, and not be lost. That would be an ecumenical matter. <laughs> oh, God, Father. The show didn't have any complex, overarching plot lines, making all the episodes self-contained. God, Ben, I'm such an idiot. I put the shorts on my head. <laughs> God, this, is, this is really top-notch stuff. <laughs> season two proved to be an even bigger success than season one, leading to a one-hour Christmas special at the end of 1996 which contains some of my favorite moments from the show. What would you say is behind tomorrow's window, Father Jack? A pair of fucking women's liquor! <laughs> Despite its popularity, the crew were running out of ideas for the characters, and this, combined with Thurman Morgan wanting to move on from the role of Ted, led to the creative team deciding to go out on a high note with season three. Did we disturb you, Father Hackett? Ass biscuits! <laughs> in this season, the writers got even more bold with their storylines, resulting in some of the most memorable episodes of the series. I invite them round and they don't even let me tell them my side of the story. <laughs> One popular episode, Speed 3, finds Dougal taking over for a disgraced milkman in a very funny parody of the Speed film series. When he comes back under four miles an hour, bang. <laughs> Sorry, I lost it there. What happens when it goes under four miles an hour? <laughs> as well as an entire episode in which Ted must plan to, quote, kick Bishop Brennan up the arse after losing a bet. <laughs> the final episode deals with Ted finally getting his chance to be transferred to a parish in America, where he grapples with having to leave behind Jack, Dougal, and Mrs. Doyle. You wouldn't leave me behind, would you? <laughs> It's a very fitting conclusion to Father Ted. Good night, lads. You'll be up in a minute? <laughs> yes, we sleep together. Anyway, who else do you know? <laughs> Season 3 wrapped filming in late February 1998. A wrap party was held that evening, and everyone seemed in good spirits and excited to move on to other projects. The next morning, however, the cast and crew were shocked to wake to the news that Dermot Morgan suffered a fatal heart attack just hours after the wrap party, passing away at just 45 years old. I know sometimes I'm a little short with you. <laughs> sometimes I'm not as patient as I should be. But you know, in the end, we're the best of friends. Met with a shock, the crew then quickly moved on to grief as they began editing together the final episodes. Pheasant! God, I love pheasant. <laughs> well, that's a little clue. The thing you'll be eating likes pheasant as well. <laughs> Season three started airing just two weeks later, a bittersweet event for fans of the show, as they prepare to say goodbye to both Father Ted and Dermot Morgan. I think we'd all be happiest where we belong, on Craggy Island. While Father Ted is an ensemble work, the comedy truly rests on the shoulders of Ted Crilly and the performance of Dermot Morgan. Ted, thanks to Dermot, is the only relatable character in the show, surrounded by larger-than-life caricatures. Do you remember him, Ted? Ted! Ted, I 
Are you asleep? Do you remember him? Yes! I remember him, Noel. Dermot sometimes felt that the writers were giving the other characters the bigger laughs, but it's so evident from watching the show today just how much the humor comes from his delivery and reactions to this crazy world around him. Do you know what I mean? I do, Ted. <laughs> do you? No. <laughs> Over 30 years later, it still remains one of the most effective comedy performances ever put to film. Imagine what he'll do when he finds out about all the money you stole from that charity. <laughs> Dugan! Dugan, that money was just resting my account before I moved it on. Dermot dying before he could pursue other parts has given the Ted character this almost mythological quality. While it's tragic that we lost him so young, I'm also so thankful that he was able to give us a character like Father Ted. None! <laughs> no, it's none. Frank Kelly sadly passed away in 2016, on the very same day that Dermot died 18 years prior. While Ardell O'Hanlon and Pauline McGlynn have found success in other projects, they have both come to embrace the fact that Father Ted was the most important project of their careers. The show will stand the test of time, at least in Ireland and England, so I feel a lot of US audiences would find a lot to love in this show as well. You can forget about them, Dougal. You can forget about ICT and, and Scoopy Scoopy Dog Dog. It was actually almost remade in America twice. Oh, bollocks. Both attempts never got off the ground, though, which is fine by me, as I don't feel the humor could be replicated for the American TV market. But at least for us, the original 25 episodes will always be there to enjoy, and for new generations to discover. You are, after all, a man of God. A what? <laughs> a priest. Well, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. So if you're still debating checking out Father Ted after watching this video, what are you waiting for? Start watching right now. Anyway, night, Dougal. Night, Ted. <sighs>